everyone, it's Lisa from My Dreaming So Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. Now, today I'm making some soaps, or well, one on video, of the type of soaps that I often take to a show. I do take quite a few of my picture soaps, but I also take some much more plain, sort of elegant soaps to shows as well and these are the type of soaps that I take and the reason for that is that people do love the picture soaps and I sell an awful lot of them at shows but I'm sure you're all aware of the whole thing about oh don't want to use the pretty soap and that sort of thing so I do sort of two ranges my picture soaps and also sort of my, my I sort of call them the elegant classic soaps so they're still beautiful soaps uh, but they just haven't got the pictures in and what I tend to do with them, I've got two styles and I start off with an impression mat. Now anytime I use an impression mat on my channel I do always get asked where I got it from and do I sell them. I make these impression mats myself. Now I don't sell them in the shop because they're they're real pain to make and I've and then they're, they're fine. My impression mats are great, they're nice. They cost quite a lot to make because of the silicone that I use and I use quite a lot of silicone. So that for me kind of prices them out of selling them to people. And also as well, to me these impression mats are good enough for me, but for me to put something in the shop, it has to be pretty immaculate um, in the shop. And they're, they're a little bit sort of homemade-y looking. So, so I know people always ask, you know where do you get the impression match from and so that's why I just wanted to go over that so with all of these soaps I do sort of an ombre effect but not a dark ombre and I don't actually pour it as an ombre I do pour it in layers but it's always a layered ombre now the reason I use layers rather than ombre because an ombre would be lovely to pour because it would just be nice and quick done and dusted that sort of thing the reason I use layers is because then it gives me more flexibility with fragrances that I'd want to use. You know, to pour a decent ombre, especially in a soap mould that's this big, you need a, a fragrance that's going to stay really fluid for quite a while. Whereas layers, it gives me a lot more opportunity to use those fragrances that set up a little quicker, which are great for layers. I can also use those more fluid fragrances as well, just need to wait a little for them set up. Okay, so that's what we're looking at doing. So the very first thing I want to do is, this is going to be an ombre, I'm going to use black plum and rhubarb fragrance from Candle Shack in the UK. So I'm going to have sort of like a magenta plum colour ombreing into white. So the first thing I do is I mix up all of my oils. So what I've got here is this big jug is going to contain all of my white oils because I want the soap to not be a really shouty colourful soap, I want it to be a more gentle soap. So this is what's going to be my white and this smaller jug is going to be my purple. And what I do is I mix all the colour up first just to save each layer of me having to mix everything up and then I just work out the ratio and I just gradually reduce. So like in the first layer I might have 50% of my coloured oil and 50% of my white and then that will decrease and then I'll have a bit less of this and a bit more of white until it goes all the way through to white. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is prepare these oils by adding the colourants to them for the whole batches. So for my uh, purpley colour, I'm going to have a mixture of Purple Heart, it's going to be a 50-50 mix, and Red Riot. So this is Black Plum and Rhubarb, so it gives me that nice mix, that nice sort of magenta type colour, the mixture between Plum and Rhubarb. I'm going to do 50-50 of those, just a straight half of each. Okay, so this is going to be all of my purple oil. And I do add in some TD premix as well. So I'm just going to pop that in. Now you might, might wonder why I've added TD to this when this is supposed to be my purple bit of soap. And what I tend to find is that if you want a lighter colour, you can do it two ways. You can either put less mica in the oils and that will give you a less pigmented soap and therefore it will be lighter. The problem I've found with that, especially with something like a purple, is purples can tend to go grey then when you do that. 
So what I do is here, I keep the rate normal for what I would use for my soap and they just add a, a little bit of TD in there as well, just to knock the colour back a bit. And by doing this, I've got all of this colour mixing done at the start and it's just easier for me to weigh off what I need and pour my colours. Okay, I'm going to give that a blend in a minute, I know it looks funny. Right, I now need to put my TD in for the big batch. Now I'm working without gloves on at the moment because I've got no lye here. This is literally just my oils at the moment. Okay, so there's a nice bit of prep work done. And this just makes it easier that each time you then pour a layer, I could just use a bit of this and a bit of that. And I know I haven't got to keep trying to work out, oh, now I need a little bit less mica and that, because that's a bit of a pain to do. So let's get these blended up. Now I like to do this ahead of time, so I can give these a really nice blend and then let them settle and release any air bubbles. So those are my colours done, so my white and my mixture colour to give me that sort of plummy, rhubarb type colour. And I'm now just going to leave these for a little while. I've got, I'm making sort of several soaps at the same time. So these can just sit and just make sure after that good old blend they release any bubbles. And then we'll come back and start using those in a soap. For my very first layer for this soap, I'm, I'm actually making the soap upside down. So I'm doing the impression map bit. So what's going to happen with the soap? It's going to start with the colour at the bottom and then it's going to ombre into white. But I do want a little tinge on top of the sort of bit of the soap where the impression mat will be, it's sort of a tinge on the top of the frills. So what I've got here is I'm going to do a very small amount of soap and I've worked out my ratio. I'm going to do sort of a 50-50 of the pinky purple colour and the white. Now I've mixed these all up earlier as you saw and you need to remember if you're doing this in advance, two things. First of all, as you're going to use it, you must give it a good stir because that mica will settle. So stir it round again. Secondly, when you're accounting for what you're pouring out, if you're going to say, I need this much oil for this much lye, remember now your oil weight has changed because you've added micas to it. So therefore you need to reweigh the entire amount and work out how much you now need to pour out with it because it will be slightly more now because it's got more stuff in it and you don't want to be having the wrong amount of oil for the wrong amount of sorry for, for for the amount of lye because that's really important to get right isn't it okay so i'm just going to pour out these very small amounts that i need for this first bit and then for my white I'm just mixing it straight up in this little bottle. I wouldn't normally do this, but I'm actually using my smallest container that I mix stuff in for something else I'm doing at the moment. So let's add my lye solution. And with small amounts, I'm just using a dropper so I get it exactly right. Okay, so I'm now gonna just blend this directly in this little bottle. And then I'm going to pop in my fragrance. Okay, and this is a different dropper than I'm using, not the same one as I used for my lye solution. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Okay, so let's just get my mould in and put my impression mat in the bottom. So now all I'm going to do is I'm just using the squeeze bottle just because it's a small amount of soap and I just want to make sure I can just disperse it nicely through these little ruffles that I've got. I don't necessarily want a solid colour everywhere, we'll just see how we're doing with all this much soap. Okay, I think that will be fine. Okay. 
so as you can see it's not completely covered everything that's exactly what I want so now what I'm going to do is immediately mix up my first layer which is going to be completely white now I'm not going to worry about breaking the fall with this in here because I actually don't mind if this mixes in with the top a bit in fact I might even give it a little bit of a wiggle to help that happen Okay, so I'm being quite rough to try and sort of disturb some of that. Okay, and then I'm just going to finish off with the rest of that. Nice and fluid there so that it gives me a nice straight layer. I am going to scrape the layer to give it a little bit of shape. But obviously it's good to start with it a bit flat. Okay, so I'm going to put that aside for now and when that's set up we'll come back and scrape it. I think we're nicely set up in here to do a little scraper, just a little tester. So I'm just going to scrape this. Now I don't want to scrape too much off. Right, I'm going to be pretty happy with that I think. And what I'm going to do is, so I don't waste any soap, because I'm using similar colours, I'm just doing an ombre, each time I scrape off, then the surplus is just going to go into the oils for the next batch. So these are my oils for the next layer. So I'm just going to scrape that into there. And then they'll just get blended into that next layer. I'm going to do a gentle mica line, not too heavy in between each layer. And I'm going to be using this lime green mica from Pure Rock Colours. For mine, I just pop it in a little pot with a stretched bit of clean tights or stocking on there. And then I just write on the pot how much I put in there. So I can weigh it at the end and I can then see how much I've used. mica limes is you don't want them to cause your soap to split apart so therefore if you do a thick mica line then it's likely your soap will split because it's got nothing to adhere to so I always do a very gentle one so it's a very just a hint of a line and as you can still see plenty of the white soap through mine don't forget to wipe off the sides of your mold as you do that because you will probably get mica on the sides of your mold and that'll make the sides of your soap look dirty. So now I've done that, let's just mix up my next layer. So in here I've got the soap again, and I've got, let me just check my notes, I've now got 12.5% of this colour as the colour, the, the pinky purple, and the rest of it as white so you can see it's a very gentle change that I want and also I've popped in that soap that I scraped off so let's just get rid of one of these spatulas then we'll get our light solution and get this blended up how I pour this one because I don't want to disturb the mica line too much So this one can now pop into our hot cupboard to keep warm or just leave it on the side just to set up ready to scrape and we'll repeat the process. Okay, 
so there's that done and again I'm just going to take that excess and pop it into the next layer and the other thing you might notice is I've already poured my oils out for my next layer and I always do that if I've got layers what I do is as soon as I finish with the jug I then pour my next oils into the jug and that then gives them time to settle and disperse any air bubbles if you did all this scraping and then think right I need my new oils and you went and got your oils then and poured them in you're gonna have more air and more bubbles in your jug as you mix it up so literally as soon as you finish with the jug and you know you're gonna have to put some more oil in it pop it in as soon as you can get it into that jug Okay, I'm not going to muck around with that too much because I want to get that banged down and level. Remember, this is going to be the bottom of my soap. So I'm obviously not going to do anything weird with the what's the bottom there because remember this soap has been made upside down in the mould. So I'm now just going to put this away to gel and then we'll have a look and see what it looks like tomorrow. Here's our soap the next day. Let's peel off this impression mat, shall we? one of my favourite things. Okay, so there we are. We're just those tinges of the pink on the side. Okay, let's get this cut. Now, what I will tend to do is with a soap with a mica line like this is cut it so that you're cutting in line with the mica line you know a bit like if you have any seeds or anything in your soap it stops it dragging throughout the rest of the soap okay so let this get this cut let's have a look at that inside so there we are with that I think that's really pretty and that top on that is really nice and cute and it just ties in with that bottle line that gentle mica line just highlighting the design going through the soap it's going to be pretty well the same for each one pretty tops and then our inside okay and I'm happy with the gradient as I said before I didn't want the gradient to be you know really dark at the bottom so I'm just happy with that sort of gentle color going up into the white there And to finish off, I'll just leave you with a couple of photos of the soap. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you like the soap. If you have, it would be great if you gave me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, why not subscribe to my channel? Thanks for watching, everyone. Happy soaping!